From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. The creation of this new river authority will help electrify rural Texas. And so today, we gather here to dedicate this mighty structure to Canada. This has been a great organization for 60 years. It's going to be a great organization for a long time to come. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the April 2002 edition of Wavelength. You know, the LCRA is the leading producer of renewable energy in Texas. After all, it's a key component of our mission statement. And up until 1995, hydro was the only fuel source in the renewable mix. But all that changed when the LCRA began receiving power from the first commercial wind project in far west Texas. Now, seven years later, the LCRA fuel portfolio for renewables includes more than 100 megawatts of wind, and it's growing. It's known as the Rio Pecos area of Texas. Vast expanses of desert punctuated by mountains and mesas. Land nearly impossible to get to unless you're the wind. This is the Indian Mesa Wind Farm. It's where the LCRA's newest crop of renewable energy is being harvested. And members of the Resource Planning Department are here to see firsthand how it all works. Well, I tell you, that's the um, second time I've been on the top of a unit. This is the largest unit I've climbed up on. And for one thing, I got to go all the way to the very top and stand on the generator itself and stick my head like a gopher up out of the top and look around. And it's magnificent, not only for the view, but you're there and you can see the blade right in just a few feet in front of you as it's going around. And they're magnificent and very elegant machines. Improvements in technology combined with favorable tax credits have allowed wind farm developers to reduce their costs making it more attractive to utilities such as the LCRA to purchase the power. Wind power gives us an opportunity to keep expanding that little portion of our portfolio that's renewables. Nice fixed price, if you will, and now, right now, wind power is very competitively priced with any other form of generation. The LCRA has a fuel and energy policy that directs the staff to look for a diverse supply of environmentally sound, low-cost, Texas-based fuel to generate electricity. As you might imagine, it's not easy to meet all of those objectives, but with the explosion of new wind generation, it's making it much easier. The yellow bar is our customers' uh, demand. It's about uh, just under 1,500 megawatts. Dan Keen oversees LCRA's energy trading and explains how wind fits into the fuel portfolio. I think the future is bright for wind and other renewable uh, uh, generation resources. And when we look at uh, and evaluate our portfolio, our analysis shows that, that anywhere between 5 and 8 percent of our energy that we provide our customers is beneficial to come from a fixed price type of resource. Today the wind power production is turning out more than a thousand megawatts and the potential is there to generate more. But the generation of power from wind is growing much faster than the electrical grid can handle. It's very similar to like a helicopter or a... Philip Wan Tu is the Indian Mesa plant manager. He says that while the potential for wind power is huge, there is a bottleneck that is preventing it from getting to the utilities that want to deliver it to their customers. There's probably eight, nine hundred wind, wind turbines around here that you could probably see with a decent pair of binoculars and the transmission infrastructure hasn't been able to keep up with that and basically we need more and fatter wires to, to take all the power away from the McCamey area that's, that can be generated here on a windy day. While it takes just a few months to install a wind turbine, it takes years to design and build transmission lines. In June, construction of $150 million in transmission line improvements will begin in far west Texas that will help alleviate some of the problem as early as next year. By the time the entire project is complete in 2006, the LCRA will have added 115 miles of new transmission lines and another 300 miles of existing lines will be replaced with lines of higher capacity. In the end, the new transmission lines will help bring even more renewable energy to market in Texas and reduce some of the energy congestion among the windswept mountains of the Rio Pecos. 
It's the end of a long journey to the sea, the mouth of the Colorado River. Where salt water meets fresh water, there is a unique ecosystem. Plants, birds, and sea creatures live in a delicate balance here. The LCRA Board of Directors approved the purchase of this 1,600 acre tract back in March 2001. It's called Matagorda Bay Nature Park and Preserve, and it will be home to LCRA's third environmental learning center on the river. The property has two miles of frontage on the Colorado River, two miles on the Gulf of Mexico, and frontage on East Matagorda Bay. The bulk of the property, some 1,100 acres, is made up of coastal wetlands. LCRA crews spent three days recently surveying a 200-acre section of the property to determine where development can take place. It will assess the acreage of the wetlands that we find on the property. We'll describe the types of wetlands. Once the Corps verifies the boundaries and the types and what we've done with the delineation, we'll have a footprint of the wetland systems within this area of the tract that we can then site the facilities that we'd like to build and hopefully follow the agency sequencing, which is to avoid wetland areas, minimize your impact to them. If you can't avoid them, mitigate. This delineation process involves running parallel transects across the property at 600 foot intervals. Then these LCRA biologists walk each transect making specific observations. What we do at an observation plot is we dig a soils pit that's 16 inches deep and uh, within a five foot radius around this this point we identify the dominant vegetation and we uh, look at uh, the soils for indications of saturation we call them hydric soil indicators and we look for uh, indicators for hydrology or whatever makes the soils wet and uh, those are the three criteria that are necessary for an area to be classified as a wetlands. Two more public meetings will be held in Matagorda County to hear input from local citizens on the park master plan, which has three major elements. First is a preserve. Nearly 1,400 acres will be set aside in its natural state. Second is an environmental learning center, a place for classrooms, exhibits, and meeting facilities. Third is an 85-room nature lodge, similar to one at Canyon of the Eagles on Lake Buchanan. The lodge will be developed and operated through a public-private partnership with LCRA. One of the major draws to this area is the abundance and diversity of bird species which can be seen here. The bird communities here are tremendous. There's rare birds, there's multifold common birds, everything from gulls to herons to raptors to songbirds. There's all different types of mammals, amphibians, reptiles. The wealth of animals on this property is tremendous, as well as the wealth of the vegetation on the property. It's wonderful from a natural resource standpoint, and protecting all this and setting it aside, like the LCRA will do, the majority of it, is a tremendous environmental leadership opportunity. The facilities and activities here will be aimed at getting people closer to nature. We would have a kayak trail. There's opportunities to do that. That's a big thing at the Texas coast now, and so we're, we're pursuing that. That's a, there's a big demand for that kind of a use. And then other facilities that, that uh, reflect the great birding opportunities uh, that we have there. We would have boardwalk systems uh, with uh, viewing blinds. Uh, we, would, uh, we anticipate we'll have a cruise uh, a boat similar to the Vanishing Texas River Cruise at Canyon of the Eagles that would actually take people uh, and would have a docking facility for that and then that would take people back into east and west Matagorda Bay uh, and to different locations. Um, so we just have a great uh, number of opportunities there. A great deal of trash removal and cleanup has already taken place on the property. This whole area used to be a mobile home park and a couple of years ago it was burned down and so when we bought the property LCRA came in and a couple of weeks ago we came in here with our parks and conservation crew and picked up everything and hauled it all off. There were 11 septic tanks in the site and we uh, filled those in uh, in accordance with county regulations. 28, 36. Once the Corps of Engineers checks the data and conclusions of this survey, the permitting process can move forward. Current plans call for a construction start date of mid-2003.
When the LCRA was created by the Texas legislature in 1934, its mission was clear. Control flooding on the Colorado River and bring electricity to rural communities in Central Texas. Today, the LCRA is serving communities in rural Texas in ways that could not have been imagined in 1934. Students here at the Dripping Springs Independent School District now have high-speed internet access at all of their campuses thanks to a partnership between the school district, Zcon Wireless Internet, and the LCRA. This is a celebration of partnership. As part of the agreement, LCRA is leasing capacity on its fiber optic network and free radio tower space to Zcon which agreed to provide free high-speed internet access to the Dripping Springs School District, Community Library, and the Hill Country Senior Citizen Activity Center. A similar partnership between LCRA and ZCON in Marble Falls has proven highly successful for public schools and the community. We are confident that this model will prove to be just as beneficial for Dripping Springs. Congressman Lamar Smith was on hand for the celebration. He told students and teachers how important this technology is to the economy and the future of education. Texas is at a greater disadvantage even than other rural areas across the country because in Texas we're about 10 percent behind the national average when it comes to high-speed access in the rural parts of the state. And so what we need to do is to catch up, and that's what LCRA and Zcon Wireless are trying to help us do. And that's why what they're providing is really such a help to the community and such a help uh, to the state as well. And it makes it faster so we can learn more. The school district also has a plan to share resources with senior citizens. We'll have students who are highly interested in technology go and teach and coach senior citizens in using email and internet may facilitate communication with family, may provide, uh, just open up a whole new world that they've not experienced, plus create mentor uh, relationships between senior citizens and students. Uh, we think it'll be a big asset. This free internet access saves the school district several thousand dollars a month. LCRA and ZCON are already talking to additional school districts in the region about forming similar partnerships. We initially started out at Horseshoe Bay and Marble Falls and we worked out the details of the system and tested it for a year. Now we're ready to begin expanding at a much faster rate. Five new directors took their seats on the LCRA board in January. They were appointed by Governor Rick Perry and approved by the Texas Senate. The newest LCRA board members are Robert Long representing Bastrop County. Hughes Abel from Travis County, Charles Mosier from Washington County, Ray Wilkerson represents Travis County, and Connie Granberg represents Blanco County. Now that they've had some time to get settled in at the LCRA, we want to introduce them individually to you. First up this month, meet Robert Long of Bastrop. Hello, Bob. How are you this morning? Good. And you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Bob Long grew up around the LCRA. His father, Cecil Long, was an LCRA board member for nearly 30 years, serving under five governors. The Long Building at the General Office Complex in Austin is named for Cecil Long. Bob says his dad truly loved the LCRA. The word that explains my dad to, to me is he was a very gracious person. He always was uh, serving and giving to others, uh, to his family and his friends and his community and that's why he served on LCRA so long and other boards and committees right here in the community. Who's got chaplains starting the 5th of April? Like father, like son. Bob Long is also very involved in his community. He's a volunteer chaplain with the Bastrop Police Department. He's treasurer of the Bastrop Ministerial Alliance. He's on the board of the First National Bank of Bastrop and he's been chair of the Bastrop County Republican Party for the past 20 years. Bob and his wife Sue, along with their son and grandkids, still love to tend the cattle on the family ranch outside of Bastrop. Well, it gets your mind off of the uh, pressures of the world when you can come out and be with the cattle and, and feed the cattle and close to nature and, and uh, all they care about is that pickup truck and that feed sack, <laughs> not too complicated. I like the simplicity of it. Sue and Bob were high school sweethearts and have been married now for 39 years. 
She says he is excited about being involved with the LCRA. Well, he's busier than ever, and um, but he's really enjoying it, learning a lot, and enjoying what he's learning. It's a challenge, and that's, that's always good. That helps keep him young, I guess. The Long family has a great history in Bastrop County and a very personal relationship with the Colorado River. I like the fact that we've, uh, uh, LCRA has cleaned up the water. There was a time that, that uh, you didn't want to eat fish out of the Colorado, especially around Bastrop, uh, because of things coming from Austin and other uh, problems. And now we have some of the cleanest water in the country. And uh, I appreciate that because my land is adjacent to it and my cows drink out of the Colorado River. And uh, I like the beauty of the river. Uh, Bastrop's built on the river. Uh, we have a park on the river. And of course the river walk that LCRA participated in uh, is really makes Bastrop historically a big part of the river just like Austin is on Town Lake. Bob is also involved in the habitat conservation plan for the endangered Houston toad in Bastrop County. He's very supportive of LCRA's environmental education efforts. Well, I'm impressed with our, our ability to uh, build facilities for learning for young people as well as others, you know, all the way from the uh, Canyon of the Eagles to right on down to we're going to do something in Matagorda and stopping right here at McKinney Ruffs in Bastrop. Uh, that's impressive and I think it, uh, it's a real service to communities that couldn't otherwise do it. Uh, bringing nature and the environment uh, up to the forefront. Uh, every child loves the outdoors and we seem to be doing that and history too. Bob Long's term on the LCRA board will expire in 2007. Lake Bastrop is a wonderful recreational resource here in Central Texas. Fishermen, campers, and hikers love the picturesque lost pines surrounding the lake. Ready to go plant pine seedlings? Okay, let's do it. About 50 volunteers showed up on a recent Saturday morning here at South Shore Park to help ensure that this pine forest continues to thrive. It's part of an LCRA reforestation program called One thousand loblolly pine seedlings were planted on three sites in the park to help replace decreasing numbers of mature pines. Well, we're going to plant trees to let them grow big and strong. Okay, right down in the middle, John. Not, not too far. The Clean and Green program helps communities and schools with beautification projects and has worked with wildlife co-ops planting vegetation that will improve wildlife habitat. The program puts kids to work. It allows beautification. Uh, they see it as a very positive thing. They may have different reasons why they want to put trees in their community, but there are a lot of very committed people in the communities, in the outlying communities that we serve and they're thrilled that we're doing something positive to help them out. LCRA volunteers helped coordinate the planning and provided lunch for the group. I feel good about it, helping the environment, helping the communities, uh, helping LCRA's parks are all a part of our job. Why is it a good idea to plant some trees like that? Because it helps um, the environment, it helps the environment. And it's good to plant trees because then more animals have more homes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. We'll look forward to seeing you again next time.